This program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Kidnappers, a community access media station. Thanks to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible. Good morning, everyone. This is Heike from the Active Puncture On Air show. And today we're going to be talking with um, John Kennedy of Masterton. Now he's an acupuncturist, um, ACC accredited and a member of um, Acupuncture New Zealand. And he's had over 20 years of experience. Good morning, John. How are you? Yeah, great, Heiko. Good morning. Hey, thanks for having me on the show today. That's okay. Well, not too early for you. I mean, it, you know. Oh, not at all. Not Maybe at all. About an hour before this. <laughs> okay, then, John, just first tell us a bit... Um, about yourself, because you, you've got quite an interesting story. I mean, I think you, you were a butcher before you became an acupuncturist, and uh, and then the story goes that you that you, you didn't like the you know treating the the, the dead meat because it didn't move. Is that is that true? Uh, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah, it, it all started. You know, I started off. Um, I left school. I got a butchery apprenticeship with my father. Um, so yep, that's right. I've gone from being a butcher to an acupuncturist. <laughs> So I couldn't put the meat back together, so I thought I'd try putting people back together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was working in my dad's shop for about nine years, and during that time I developed you know, quite a severe back pain, and so much so that I couldn't like sit, stand, or lie down for any longer than about 20 minutes at a time. And I spent a year at Wakefield Medical Centre in Wellington with various doctors, physios, and surgeons, etc., trying to find out what was wrong with my back. But, you know, nothing, we couldn't find anything that was wrong. So after about a year of investigation, they sent me on my way saying, you know, hey, just look after yourself the best you can because we can't find anything. Take take some drugs. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they didn't even offer that. <laughs> they, they just said, you know, just, we don't know. Yeah. Do what you can. So I, I cruised off and about four years later, so I'd had this, this pain for, for at least five years. And my auntie was on a holiday from America and she advised me to go and have some acupuncture in Wellington, which I did. And after my very first treatment, I was like about 95% better. I sort of got off the table after this guy took the needles out and I sort of bent down to put my shoes on. I sort of bent down and thought, up and down, then left and right. I thought, hang on, you know, I can move. There's no restriction. <laughs> so I, I walked out and I bumped into the, the guy who was Ola Punji. And I said, hey, look, you know, how long does this acupuncture take to work? And he said, some people notice a difference straight away. Others might take, you know, six or eight visits before they notice anything. I said, right, so, okay, so I'm not just imagining feeling better. He <laughs> says, no, no, just make an appointment for next week. <laughs> So I went out and I did that, but as soon as I left this clinic, I went straight down to Wellington Library, got a book out on acupuncture, Ted Kaptook, The Web That Has No Weaver. Yep, great book. And I, and I started reading that, and then I think I saw Ola Tunji about eight times altogether, but during that time I just started asking him lots of questions, you know, what does this mean and what is that and, you know, all of this sort of thing. And then one day he says to me, he says, oh, look, you know, John, what are you doing with yourself? I said, oh you know, various sort of bits and pieces. Why is that? And he said, look, I own the New Zealand School of Acupuncture and, you know, you seem pretty interested in it and I was just wondering if you'd like to come and study. And so literally, without even thinking about it, I, I said, yeah, I'll do that. So where, <laughs> how does that work? So October 95, I knew nothing about acupuncture and I started studying it at the beginning of 96. Fantastic. And, and, and over the next four years, I, I completed my Diploma of Acupuncture, had amassed over 500 clinical hours. I'd been to Sri Lanka and worked in a hospital over there for 10 weeks. It was like, you know, and now I've been in clinic, for, as you say, for, for 20 years. Fantastic. And today we're going to be talking about um, an interesting concept. We're talking about sort of um, Chinese medicine. They, they talk about the chi, which is the energy and the blood and the yin and the yang, but also... Chinese medicine talks about the the essence, and um, the Chinese word is jing. So we're going to be talking about these um, these substances, and um, and we already know that some of these concepts that Chinese medicine had, like two two thousand years ago, um, 
they sort of almost correlate to some of the you know the, the, the modern day concepts of Western medicine. And, and, and one example that I always use is like the, the description of the heart and the blood circulation involving arteries and veins. That was actually explained quite clearly 2,000 years ago, but it, it wasn't really made clear for modern medicine until the, the 1600s. Now, um, an, another example that I'd I, I like to bring up is that um, in the 1500s, there was another um, Chinese physician, Li Xi Zhen, and he more or less exactly described the anatomical location of the adrenals and their function, you know, like 500 years before modern medicine sort of came of it. But what I think one of the most amazing um, concepts that Chinese medicine is, is this relationship with the, what they call the essence or the jing, and how it relates to, um, you know, the modern modern day concept of the of the free floating adult stem cell. So, so my first question to you is, John, is um, you know, what are some obvious comparisons between you know this this ancient Jing essence and the the modern day stem cell? Okay, now I've been working pretty much with stem cells and stem cell nutrition, not physically working with stem mm-hmm. cells. But I've been very interested in this field for you know, for about 13 years, and this started when I start, first started reading about stem cells and what they do and how they work. I said to myself, "I says I've, I've seen this information before, because what I was reading about stem cells was basically a modern scientific description of the ancient concept of Jing in Chinese medicine." So I'll do a little comparison. Um, on the concept to give the idea of what we're actually talking about. So firstly, Jing is our constitutional energy given to us by our parents at the time of conception. Now, also embryonic stem cells come into existence at the time of conception as well. And this Jing and the embryonic stem cells are both responsible for creating a healthy baby at the time of birth. Now, after birth, the function and location you know, of the jing and stem cells change. Both the jing and the adult stem cells are both stored in the bone marrow. Both the jing and adult stem cells are responsible for the day-to-day repair of the body. Both the jing and adult stem cells are responsible for birth, growth, development and reproduction. And of course, the more jing, the more stem cells we have, the longer and healthier we live. And that's because as our cells die off in our body, the more our body can replace those dying cells, the healthier we remain. Jill's, course, just, Jill's just looking at me. She, she, wants, she wants to get some of this jing. She, she wants to know where can she get some from. Anyway, yes. sorry to interrupt you, John. You, you yes. keep going. <laughs> she, she's got plenty of jing, but it's just a matter of you know, helping the body, bone marrow to release it. Yeah. And then she gets this stuff going on. So, you know, as, as you can see, you know, the more stem cells we've got, the more jing we have, the, the longer and healthier we live. Yeah. But also both jing and adult stem cells you know, in circulation decline as we age. Because as we age, the bone marrow gets stickier. So therefore, when we've got cells dying off, that sticky bone marrow doesn't release the stem cells or release the jing the way it did when we were younger. And that's why, you know, you see a lot of people, you know, Kids that scratch themselves or or cut themselves when they're out playing in the park, they'll take three or four days to heal. Yeah, and and when you when you're my age, you you you, you scratch yourself and it takes three three months to (laughs) to get better. Yeah, yeah, and that's far beyond just you know the vitamins and minerals of the food Mm. because they feed the cells, but it's up to the stem cells and the jing to actually repair damage that was created. Mm. What I'm really amazed about is, is that, you know, the ancient physicians, you know, they, they worked out that, the, you know, this jing came from the marrow and, you know, these ancient Taoist priests and kung fu masters, you know, who were always aiming for longevity, they always spoke about preserving the jing essence and, and, and if you looked after it properly, you could live to be 120 years old. Now, how does this relate to the, the modern the modern day stem cell? Yeah, well, well, modern scientific research, of course, has documented that we actually have enough stem cells to last us around 130 years. Wow. So, so you know, these Taoist monks, they, they were pretty close. Yeah, only, you know, only 10 years out. <laughs> yeah, only 10 years out. And, and, and for back then, you know, being able to observe people, how they live, 
you know, the lifestyles that they had, you know, played a big part of, you know, the longevity of people. And, you know, now the reason that we don't live that long is because, you know, poor diet and lifestyle choices put a strain on our body. And when our bodies are under strain, that bone marrow becomes stickier. So, again, we can't release the stem cells and get that same level of repair as, you know, these Taoist monks, you know, sitting on the mountaintop, you know, breathing the, the freshest air, eating the organic food, you know, meditating, doing the martial arts, you know, hour after hour, day after day. Now, one thing I, I just want to make clear because um, I know that some people think that, you know, it, it's sort of been programmed into us, I think, from just, you know, modern-day advertising that, you know, for stem cells, you know, you actually need to, you know, extract them out of your body in some way, like, you know, get a syringe and stick it into your spine or you take them out of some fat cells in your stomach and then and then re-inject them back into where the problem is. Um, now, I should I add that this is a very expensive procedure, but... John, just tell us about, um, you know, we, we've got the stem cells anyway. They're there. They're in it. They're in our marrow. How can they be released into the bloodstream? Okay. So there's many different ways of doing that. Now, now, first of all, just when you're talking about those procedures of, of extracting the stem cells, spinning them out centrifugally and then injecting them back in, that's more targeted in what we sort of describe as a stem cell treatment mm. where they're treating a symptom because they're putting the stem cells where the doctor thinks they need to go to treat that symptom. Yeah. When we talk about our body's own innate healing power, we're talking about something at a, at a much greater, a much deeper level. So, yeah, there are various ways to release your own stem cells from the bone marrow. For example, meditation, yoga, Qigong, you know, even running a marathon, you know, putting all the damaging those muscles and the lungs and the heart by doing that intense exercise, all those damaged cells are sending signals to the bone marrow. The bone marrow are increasing the circulation of those stem cells to go and do that repair. But you can even go and drop a brick on your toe, yep. and that will support the release of those stem cells. Now, all of these, of course, except dropping a brick on your toe, can take years to master yeah. and hours of you know, hours per day of practice to achieve those health results. So just here, Heiko, I'd just like to sort of like back up a little bit and just sort of explain you know, the process of the cellular um, repair of the body. Mm -hmm. So every cell in your body has a limited lifespan. Some cells live for a few days, others for a few weeks or months, and one or two cells in your body actually live for a, a couple of years. Like, you know, your eye cells live for two to three days and then they die. Your gut cells, they live for three to five days and then they die. Your skin cells live for about eight weeks, then they die. And when those cells in your body die, and this goes for your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidney, all the tissues in your body, when these cells come to the end of their life, they send out a signal to the bone marrow the bone marrow then releases these stem cells into circulation. They travel to that injury site or to where that cell is dying. When they come in contact with that dying cell, they switch on the gene and become a brand new healthy cell of that type. And that old dying cell just floats away. And it gets you know, either catabolized by the body or it gets flushed out. So that's our body's day-to-day -day repair system. And our body's doing this all the time. Now, the problem is, is that when our body's under stress and at, through the aging process, that bone marrow becomes stickier. So just imagine this. Your eye cell gets to the end of its life. It sends a signal out to the bone marrow, but the bone marrow is under stress, so it holds on to that stem cell. So then that eye cell dies off without being replaced. And that, over time, is called macular degeneration because the macula is degenerating. It's got cells dying off that aren't being replaced and the vision gets worse. Now, if you were able to increase you know, those circulating stem cells, then they have the potential to travel to the eye, turn into new eye cells and you know, help with that vision. And so we've, so got, is, we've got herbs and um, sort of, type of different type of herbal compounds that can, can trigger this or help this? Uh, a a absolutely. Yep. So there's different Chinese herbs that have been 
you know, clinically shown to actually increase the amount of circulating stem cells. They've got herbs that actually help with the release of stem cells, then other herbs that help with the migration of those stem cells into the damaged tissue. So you can actually help with, like, two different aspects. Now, that's how I understand that. I mean, because I, I knew at this time, it, it was it was quite some years ago, back in, in Christchurch in the early 2000s, when um, you were very, very ill, you know, um, sort of post-dengue fever. And um, so you, can you just quickly share that, that story, how um, you sort of o- o- overcame that and, um, yeah. and, and it ended up basically being indirectly through, through stem cells? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I've, I've learned to get shorter and shorter on the story. Yeah. So, so in 99... Give us the one-hour version. The one-hour version. Okay, right, we'll cut it down for that. Okay, so in my, in my last year of study of acupuncture, myself and two others went to Sri Lanka to work in a hospital, and we were there for about 10 weeks. And we worked out that in about the last week I was there, I got bitten by mosquitoes, and I ended up with dengue hemorrhagic fever. Now, I came down sick with us on our way home when we were in Singapore, And so after three days in the hotel room of being quite sick, um, I ended up in hospital for nine days. I lost 12 kilos in weight through the diarrhea, the vomiting, the fever. Um, Once I'd sort of recovered enough health to come back to New Zealand, I found that my gut and liver function had been severely compromised, where I couldn't digest food properly, my liver wasn't working, all my liver readings were all up the whack. And I actually lost about another 10 kilos over the next three months. And I was sick like this for eight years. You know, I had severe cramping and pain in my gut all the time. If I ate certain foods, it would cause my body basically almost like going to shock. I'd have shivering, tremors, anxiety, palpitations, followed by extreme pain and cramps in the guts again. That would put me into bed for two to three days um, until whatever I ate actually passed through the system. And I was like this for eight years. I spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to find out what was wrong, trying to find something that could help me, but nothing worked. And then in November 07, I saw a little video on the internet that basically said, you know, their message was, you know, stem cells are the body's own repair system. The more stem cells we have in circulation, the more repair your body can do, and the more repair your body does, the healthier we become. And we have a plant-based product that helps to increase your own circulating stem cells. So the short end of this story, without going into all the detail, is I got some of this product, I started taking it, and literally within three months, all of my gut, my liver function, and everything had gone completely back to normal. Yeah, no, um, I, I mean, I can vouch for that because um, I knew at that time, and then, when, and then when, when I saw you some time later, I was sort of thinking, geez, what, what's happened? You know, you're finally, <laughs> you're finally well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it is an amazing thing that, that a, a simple sort of herbal compound can just um, have such, such a dramatic effect. But listen, John, we're getting a little, little bit short on the time. Um, yep. We have to finish up here. But what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll put your contact details down onto the, the comment section in the YouTube. And, of course, yep. people can always ring the radio station if they, they, they want to talk to you more about that. And um, I, again, I, I just want to give a, a big special thanks to um, to Jill and Ken here, the the, the two people, of the, the dream team, keeping this the, the radio station going all through the the lockdown. And um, I, I know that you're a big Doors fan, John. So I've, I've got a song for you called um, "The Backdoor Man." So, um, John, thanks very much for coming on to the show. Mate, it's absolutely been a pleasure. And um, and thanks for that that shortened version of your story. It was great. All right, so here's the song, and then we'll, we'll see everybody next week. This program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Kidnappers, a community access media station. Thanks to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible.